missing data analysis 7. In today's session, we would be doing an absolutely practical implementation of the EM algorithm. We would be using the faithful data set in R which relates to the eruption time and the waiting time of quizzes and this data set comes in R by default. So, it is in the data set package in R. When we plot the data, we would see that this data has two modes. So, there is a, a very clear indication of two modes and this indication of two modes is in the waiting time of eruption. So, a appropriate mixture model can be used to model the waiting time between two eruptions. So, we would be using the waiting time, the, uh, we would be modeling the waiting time using the mixture model. We would write down what are the E step and the M step for in this context and then we would be building a program in R which estimates the parameters of the mixture distribution. We shall use multiple initial values and see how the EM algorithm performs with multiple initial starts. The objective here is to analyze data set called old faithful data in R and to see how we can use EM algorithm to estimate the parameters. The old faithful data set is stored in R and if as an object called faithful and if we write question mark faithful, we would get the details of the data set. So, the details of the data set are as follows. So, the data set contains waiting time between eruption and the duration of eruption for old faithful geysers in Yellowstone National Park. Uh, this has a data frame with 272 observations on two variables. The first variable is eruption which is a numeric variable and contains the eruption time in minutes and then the second variable is the variable called waiting which is also numeric and it is the waiting time to next eruption in minutes. The first thing that we can do is we can plot this data. So, we can use the hist command and say faithful dollar waiting x lab waiting time and mean is blank. So, we just want the mean to be blank. So, there should not be any title heading and we get the plot. So, if we see the plot, there is clearly a, it is a mixture distribution, it is a bi, uh, it is a bimodal distribution if we can see and approximately from eyeballing, we can say that there is one mode around at 50 to 55 minutes and there is one mode around 80 to 85 minutes or between 75 to 85 minutes. So, the idea is that we can use a mixture distribution to represent the waiting time. If we use a mixture distribution, then the then the PDF is P into norm a uh, normal density of mu 1 sigma 1 plus 1 minus P of normal mu 2 sigma 2. So, let us define the quantities here. So, we have x which is the waiting time between eruption, we have p and p denotes the probability that the eruption is of a shorter waiting time. So, here the parameters space is theta and the parameter vector sorry the parameter vector is theta and the parameter vector contains the following parameters that is p mu 1 mu 2 sigma 1 sigma 2 where p is the probability as we have defined earlier mu 1 and sigma 1 are the parameters of the first normal distribution and mu 2 and sigma 2 are the parameters of the second normal distribution. Let us define 
y i is equal to 1 if x i has shorter waiting time and 0 if x i has longer waiting time. Now, note that although here is no missing data in x, the y i's are missing. So, we can assume that y i follows a Bernoulli distribution with parameter p. Now, in this context, because we can assume that the y i's are missing, we can use a EM algorithm to estimate what are the parameters. Now, by virtue of our model, we have assumed that y i given x i theta follows a binomial distribution with parameters 1 and p i. Also note that for the kth iteration, so if theta takes the value theta k and p i takes the value p i k, then y i given x i theta k follows binomial 1 p i k, where p i k comes out to be p k into the normal not density with mu 1 and sigma 1 k by p k into normal density of mu 1 k sigma 1 k plus 1 minus p k normal density with parameters mu 2 k sigma 2 k at x i. And if we take an expectation of y i given x i at theta k, the expectation turns out to be p i k. So, the likelihood can be written as L theta given x y is equal to product of i runs from 1 to n and n here is 272 p to the power y i into a normal density with mu 1 sigma 1 to the power y i whole into 1 minus p to the power 1 minus y i into a normal density with parameters mu 2 and sigma 2 to the power 1 minus y i. So, to take a log likelihood, we can take log of L theta given x y and we can replace y i by p i k and then maximize for theta. Now, on doing that and maximizing for theta, these are the expectation equations that uh, the maximizing equations that we are getting. So, in the equations that we are getting or the updations that we are getting is rho k plus 1 is 1 by n summation rho i k mu 1 k plus 1 is summation i runs from 1 to n p i k x i by summation i equal to 1 to n p i k. Similarly, mu 2 k plus 1 is 1 minus p i k into x i by summation 1 minus p i k. Similarly, sigma 1 k plus 1 square. So, sigma 1 square k plus 1 is i runs from 1 to n p i k into x i minus mu 1 k plus 1 square by summation i runs from 1 to n p i k and sigma 2 k plus 1 square comes out to be i equal to 1 to n 1 minus p i k x i minus mu 1 k plus 1 square by summation i runs from 1 to n 1 minus p i. Now, we have got the updation step. So, on maximization the likelihood we get the following updation scheme. Once we have the updation scheme, we can put initial values and the initial values can be arbitrary. So, but it is always better to have an initial value which closely resembles or which has a a sensible app, uh, meaning. So, here we are taking rho 0 is equal to 0 0.5, mu 1 0 equal to 52, mu 2 0 equal to 82, sigma 1 0 equal to 4 and sigma 2 0 equal to 4. A way of getting this can be dividing the data into two parts, maybe less than 70 and greater than 70 and just take the mean and variance and since we are not aware of the p. So, we can take p to be 0.5. Now, using this estimates, so this the values that we just said are the starting values. Now, this needs to be passed on in the iteration step, but first we need to write the function or the em step. So, for the em step, so the em step takes two inputs. The first is the vector here we denoted by w and the starting values or the parameter values which are 
s are the parameters not the parameter values, but the parameters which are s and then the likelihood is can be written as s 1 into d norm w s 2 square root of s 4. So, this is like p 1 into normal mu 1 sigma 1 square. So, here normal mu 1 sigma 1 square the values for the param the vector parameter vector is s 2 the second and the fourth by s 1 into d norm w s 2 square root of 4 plus 1 minus s 1 into d norm w s 3 square root of s 5. So, s 1 is p, s 2 is mu 1, s 3 is mu 2, s 4 is sigma square sigma 1 and s 5 is sigma 2. Once we have this, we can find s 1 is nothing but mean of E p and s 2 is mean of E p into w by some E p. So, this is for, for the m step. So, at each iteration this is how the new values of s are being generated and this is generated from our updation step. Similarly, s 3 is 1 minus E p into w by some 1 minus E p, s 4 is E p into w minus s 2 square by some E p, s 5 is some 1 minus E p into w minus s 3 square by some 1 minus E p. Finally, we have s. Now, we would be writing another small function which is the iteration function and what does this iteration function do? The iteration function takes w and s and first computes what is the log likelihood. So, E m gives the log likelihood at w and s and once this log likelihood has been computed, we denote the cutoff and the cutoff we say is that for each of the parameters. So, here we have parameters if the difference between any two iterations is greater than 0 0.0001 we are stopping. So, we write that if some s minus s 1 greater than cutoff and this is greater than 0 then s is equal to s 1 otherwise we would be iterating w and s and if this if the sum is less than 0 then the values would be what is given in the first one that is the first iteration. And then what do we do? We pass on the values with w as faithful dollar weighting. So, this is our vector and s is 0 0.5, 0 0.52, 82, 16 and 16 and if we call iter w and s it gives the values. So, we, we get that the value of p is 0 0.36, 54.6, 80.09, 81.5, 3443. So, now we have the values of p mu 1, mu 2, uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2 or rather sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square. Now, one more thing that we can investigate is that if we change the initial values. So, for example, we change the initial values to 0 0.355, 85, 20 and 22 and then run iter w s. We get 0 0.36, 54.61, 80.09, 34.47, 34.43. So, the values are more or less similar with the previous values, but if we change that to a very large starting values in the sense that it is 0 0.6, 70, 70 and then we change the variance to 1, 1 because it is arbitrary and we want to see what is the effect. We find that eta w s 1 is 0 0.6, so, so the p value the value of p is 0 0.6 and then the two means are coming to be 70.89, 70.89 and the two variants are 184.14, 184.14. Meaning that this algorithm is sensitive to the initial values. Again if we change another for a reason the initial values we get the. So, now we have gone back and instead of 70 we have used 60 and instead of uh, uh, again 70 we have used 90 and the 
variances are 30 and 30 and we get nearly the same result as we had got earlier. So, that means that although EM algorithm works fine, but it is a bit sensitive to the initial values. So, one should carefully give the initial values for a fast convergence of the EM algorithm. In today's class, we had learnt about how to implement an EM algorithm. One should remember that EM algorithm applies to specific problems. So, for a different problem, for every different set of problems, the EM, the E step and the M step would be different and one needs to work out what exactly would be the E step and the M step. Once the E and the M steps are written and the updation step of the parameters are calculated out, then one can write a EM for, uh, algorithm in R and can run that program for a convergence criteria. The only thing that one needs to be a careful about is the choice of the initial values. So, if the initial values are carefully chosen, then EM converges to the ML estimates or the EM gives the ML estimates. In the next class, we would be talking about the multiple imputation scheme. So, in general we would start with the imputation schemes. We had a brief idea about what the imputation techniques are in a previous session, but in the next session we would be focusing on imputation techniques and more generally and more specifically on the multiple imputation techniques.